Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Goodwood Festival of Speed 2024. This is, at the end of the day, a racing festival. And it's a homage to every motorsport that's ever been invented, pretty much. But it's not just for race cars. No, 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 no. There were plenty of road cars for both the parking lots, which actually have an entry list. You can't enter the parking lots there unless you have a vehicle that matches their criteria criteria or the vehicles that the manufacturers brought to show off it's a massive endeavor we're going to start out with a car that i absolutely adore and wish was sold in america no the chaser is cool but i'm talking about the toyota gr yaris maybe the best hot hatch of the 21st century i think that's a pretty safe assessment of the yaris a wonderful homologation special things that we didn't think we would get anymore it's brilliant. Speaking of brilliant, the Swedes were in full force with Volvo, Polestar, Cyan Race, whatever you want to call them, having this majestic 18, P1800 continuation model, very blue, very cool retro mod, and exceptionally well built. There's only 25 of them in the world, if I recall, which is somehow more common than this right now, the CC850 from Koenigsegg. No one's not the only Koenigsegg in appearance. The Yesco Absolute, the speedrunning variant with the low drag fins and the custom wheels on the back just to reduce drag and increase top speed. On the other end of the spectrum, we have the Yesco Attack, which actually ran up the hill climbing the time trial because it's all about the corners. If you couldn't tell by the ludicrously massive rear wing. I love it. It's an insane machine. Granted, it doesn't have nearly 2,000 horsepower like the Navara does, but, you know, 1,600 horsepower ain't that bad. And if anything, the 800 horsepower Mustang GTD is just a little bit outclassed, if I can be perfectly honest. Which is weird to say about an 800 horsepower GT3 RS based Mustang, but there you go. Frankly, if it was me though, I would rather have this sort of purplish red 4, the Escort RS Chiaze sort of a Sierra Chiaze underneath, but it had to go homologating for the World Rally Championship, championship instead of the Group A Touring cars. Equally good, though, with a massive turbo. Love the Escort. And unsurprisingly, since we're in the British Isles, there were a lot of British cars, whether it be the Bristol or the Unos or the Jensen Interceptor. I love seeing these wacky cars. I know this isn't technically British, but it feels like a British roadster. Jacked up on steroids, the Donkervoort F22, which is the successor to the D8 GTO. And as you can see, based on the uh, side, it's very muddy on Friday because it rained overnight, which really means that this aerial Nomad 2 was far more effective of a choice if you wanted to go there. Although I will say the Atom 4R is definitely a faster choice, even though the rear wing is comically small. It's like they looked at a 2010 F1 car and said, that's the type of wing we want. We don't need it to be the full width of the vehicle to get more downforce. I'm sure there's actually a reason. I just don't know what it is. But we can also have go from the incredible track cars to the homicidal maniacs. It's like the Marcos Mantis or many of the TVRs like the Serpera here or a version of the Tamora that we see in this yellow, this really cool looking yellow sp speedster, the Tamora here. Or if you want... A car that looks like the Incredible Sagaris, but isn't. You can get the 3500 Coupe. I know it looks, it's weird how similar it is to the Sagaris, but nowhere near as impressive. You want to go impressive, the Ultimate GTR is probably the best bang for buck, even compared to the Corvettes in terms of hypercar beating kit car performance. Mental machine. And then we have Jaguar. <laughs> The Jaguar SE XE Project 8 is the best sedan maybe ever. I mean, it's technically an XE, except for the fenders, body, engine, drivetrain, aero, and optional rear seats. I don't see a difference, really. Now, this is technically a Holden Commodore, but it's a Vauxhall VXR8 GTSR. It's an incredible sort of HSV, but imported to England. I love seeing these things. In America, it's called the SS. We didn't get the, the super fancy HSV version of the Commodore, unlike Vauxhall got for the UK. 
very disappointing. Speaking of disappointing, Lotus had a very big attendance, but most of them were EVs. Now, I don't normally have a problem with EV Lotuses, because at the end of the day, the engine is not the most impressive part. But when they're so heavy and just focus on horsepower, like the Avaya here at 2,000 horsepower, not a big fan. Although I do got to give them some respect for putting a comically large rear wing on the Avaya X. It's a shame they binned it like an idiot on the start line. But I at least got a picture of it doing a run on Thursday before they binned it on Friday like a bunch of morons. Anyway, they still had some great things like the homologation special of GTE Evora or even more insanely, this Lotus 7 that definitely shouldn't exist because it has a Rover V8 shoved up its nose. Kind of. It doesn't really fit in the Lotus 7, but I would imagine it's quite terrifying. <laughs> so let's tone it down a bit. Let's go to Morgan. Nice, civilized. They still got straps on the bonnet. It's very clean, the Aero 8. I mean, they're classics. They look classic, but they're still modern. For a long time, they were still built out of wood, which is something you'd think this car would be excelling at, but this is actually brand spanking new, the Bentley 4.5 liter continuation, a new range of 4.5 liters built in original methods. Very cool from Bentley. And Austin Martin had a mega appearance. He had all of the V-bombers appear, so they had the Valiant, the Victor, the Falour, the Valkyrie, everything you was here. This is Fernando Alonso, so I think this is the Valiant. There's so many V- muscular v12 austin martin so i lose track but it does look pretty darn cool i must concede i wish it was the gold one that alonso actually has but still they made up for it with the madness that is the austin martin valkyrie how they made this road legal i do not know but it is a insane machine i mean look at the size of the diffuser the diffuser on this car is bigger than some cars you will see in Japan. It's like a K-car sized diffuser. It's insanely cool, and it was not the only incredible track-ready hypercar in attendance because McLaren and Lanzant had a really good partnership. We had the P1 GTR Lanzant road legal conversion. So this is the LM spec of this, basically, the P1 GTR and the iconic golf paint scheme. And the Senna GTR, also in the iconic golf paint scheme, with a hilariously big wing that has, what, four side supports on it? So it's got the two May and the two on the sides, and yet somehow the Solus GT is even more insane. It's not road legal, it's a single seater because you hate your friends. And it basically looks like an open-wheel Grand Prix car if you happen to put some fenders on it. I mean, it's about as far away from being a closed-wheel vehicle as you can get. But if you want a central-seater McLaren, you gotta go for the F1. This is a rebuilt F1 from MSO. It's a piece of art. I mean, look at that engine bay. The engine bay alone is worth the price of the car. It's like $20 million, and it is a genuine piece of art. One of those beautiful cars I've ever seen. It's ungodly good. Now, I'm showing you this Ultimate GTR with a hair horrible body kit on it because, well, this was the test bed for this. The Gordon Murray T50 used the Ultimate to test the massive V12 engine. I say massive. It's only 3 liters, and it's the lightest ever built. But it's still a 600 horsepower, 12,000 RPM redline V12 with a three-seater and a three-pedal gearbox. It's probably the best supercar on sale right now in terms of raw driving experience. I mean, it only has two three-fives on the front. That's how committed it is to driver over performance. If you want performance, you go for the Nicky Lauda, the track-only version with an even more powerful fan, an even more powerful engine, and one of the greatest exhaust notes I have ever heard in my entire life. This is the stuff that dreams are made of. The McLaren F1 and the GMA T50 are masterpieces. So let's move on to the French. This is the Citroen Mahalo, 
Plague. It's not exactly a elegant car, but I do kind of like it. Then we got things like the Renault 5 or the Alpine A292. Very retro style all-electric hatchbacks that are so similar looking. I wouldn't be surprised if they share a platform, but I gotta concede they do look pretty good. Or we have the Alpine A110, the new one in full force. There was the S, there was the base model, and there was the R. I didn't even get to see the R very much, but this is the S variant. And I kind of like it. In, in, in the video games, I'm not a big fan of it. But in person, I think it does look a lot better than it does in pictures. You had to see it up close. Bugatti had the Mistral, which is a funky-looking hypercar. One of the last W16s they built. And it's one of the last because this Bugatti to a billion is, well, a V16, not a W16. And my only complaint with it is that it doesn't look different enough to the Chiron. Not a big fan of the look, if I'm honest. Too safe. This is wild. The Bugatti Bolide, the last W16 they built, was in these things. And it's a track-only hypercar and probably the best-sounding Bugatti I've ever heard. Although best-looking definitely goes to the Type 35s. There were quite a few of them in attendance, most notably... The Atlanta Coupe. Yeah, it's hard to beat a Bugatti Hype 57 Atlanta Coupe. There you go. Although I do really like the Zagato. This is technically an Alpine, but they completely restyled it. It's called a twin tail, so it can be a short tail or a long tail, depending on how you want to attach it. I wish I got to see it attached, and I wish I had to see it run more often, because I think it's one of the best-looking retro-style cars in a long time, and you definitely don't see something like this every day, and I always love seeing something that's a little bit more unique, and uh, this is definitely unique, the Zagato a ATGZ Twin Tail, heck of a name, and the Germans, well, Porsche I usually love, I love Porsche to death, but their actual factory effort was kind of mid, if I'm honest, in this caliber of cars, so the 911 ST, and the Dakar, great vehicles, no doubt, but compared to everything else, I mean, it doesn't really stand a chance. You got Land Zant, you got Singer, and you got a bunch of other cars that are just absolutely incredible. Look at this Singer. It's a gorgeous piece of retro modern art. And Land Zant, they brought a Tag Turbo, named because in 1983... Porsche worked with Tag to develop engines for the Formula 1 team at McLaren. So they tested those engines in a Porsche 911. And as homage, these guys bought back a bunch of those F1 engines and shoved those V6s into 911s somehow. Meaning these engines are real F1 engines from period in a 911. That's wild. Absolutely wild. And BMW, speaking of wild, actually had a really good attendance this year. I mean, with the M3 Touring, a proper Touring, or the Alpine B5 from the G60 variant, cars that we never get to see in America. And when we do get to see them, they're super rare, like the M3 CSL. Arguably the last perfect BMW, naturally aspirated, lightweight, track-ready, yet surprisingly comfortable, gorgeously simplistic-looking M3. It's one of the best BMWs ever made, and I stand by my statement that it is the last perfect BMW, and I'm, it's, it's so great to see it in the flesh after hearing, after reading about it and watching on YouTube. It is glorious. Now, we have Tale of Two Mercedes McLaren SLR MSOs, because they're both from the MSO branch. This one is the HDK, you know, racing spec, road legal spec version. And then there's a bespoke one of one. Very different builds from the custom shop, but both of them equally cool in their own way. Speaking of its own way, this is the Brabus 800 4x4 squared black edition. And um, that's probably the most dirtiest ever seen in its entire life. Speaking of estates, we have Audi with the RS4 B5 and the Audi RS6, the previous generation. We finally got the RS6 in America, but not this one. This is the 
I believe, the first or second generation. And if you want to go all the way back to the first generation Audi, you got to go to Auto Union, which is what they used to be, with the Type 52, a prototype that was never built until Audi discovered the drawings and decided this year, actually, to finally build it. And it's sort of a McLaren F1 before the McLaren F1. Massive V16 in the middle from their Auto Union Type C Grand Prix car, and a three seating position in the front. Very ahead of its time. And speaking of time, Pagani. They seem to think of it as relative because the Zonda is still technically being built. You can probably still order one if you want, and you have enough money. From the C12 to the PS, it's the best car they've ever built by a long shot. It looks absolutely timeless, even though it came out over 20 years ago. And I gotta be honest, it's... <clears throat> better than the Wyras that we're seeing right now, even though they're the special editions. And again, say it quiet, it's better than the Utopia. I like the Utopia. It's very well built. It looks very nice. It's very elegant. But nothing beats that Zonda, man. That Zonda is so good. The only one that really tops it is the Wyra R, which we'll see in a little bit. But let's go to the beach, shall we? We have quite a few beach cars in attendance. We already saw the Citroen from earlier, but there was the Fiat 600 Jolly. And, well, most surprisingly, a Ferrari beach car. I know we're looking at Moss Ride right now, but I didn't expect to see any beach cars, much less this one, a Ferrari 365 GTC4 without any doors. It's not beautiful, per se, but it's a funky-looking Ferrari, and I always like seeing something new. It's interesting, <laughs> very interesting, but the Italians they have a very good attendance with Ferrari and Lamborghini and Maserati. Ferrari especially, my god, the FXXK is a masterpiece of engineering. It, it's very function over form. I mean, look at that engine bay. It's simply maniacal, and the aero, and the dive planes, and the whole shebang. It's it's a lot for a while. It doesn't really scream subtlety, does it? In fact, it screams very angry V12 noise, which is always good. If you want beautiful, look at the Daytona SP3, which is probably the most beautiful Ferrari made in, God, since the 458 from 2009. It's simply stunning. That thing might be my best-looking car in show. And that's saying something because Lamborghini was here, and they're usually the ones that are kind of insane. Especially because they went from this Countach, the base model LP400, all the way to this. It merely has a Liberty Walk body kit on it, but the 25th anniversary is a far cry from the LP400 from back in the day, that is for sure. Especially because the Revolto is even further away with its 1,000 horsepower hybrid system. But it does at least have a V12 and that's all that matters. Lancia did have one appearance. The Delta. And this is a pre-evolution variant of the Integrale. So it's just a world champion, not the Super Delta. But hey, what can you do? You can buy a Camira 037 Evo. Or Evo 37, however you want to say it. This twin-charged, turbocharged, and supercharged, beautiful, Restromod-esque thing is completely bespoke, completely beautiful, and I love the fact they made it a martini livery. Sensational. ...the entire 52, and it's only just now being built. And it's far more of a supercar than it looks on the outside. You've got a central driving position, and look at the length of that tail. And the family connection here. Hans Jürgen Stuck. Driving this car, not driving this car, it's far from the coffee. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, that was Uh, but it's 
uh, from Chinese manufacturers to uh, DSR, G, C. So there you go. Those are the road cars, the everyday cars of the Goodwood Festival of Speed. Okay, we needed a break from non-stop racing machinery, although these could probably beat quite a few race cars in some aspects. They're incredibly gorgeous, fast, and rare machines. And these are the road cars. We still have two more episodes of race cars coming up. Just... Try not to bend it this time.